Hey guys, welcome to a new vlog. And yes, this is my bedroom. I got new shelves, new cases, and I built them, put them together myself. So like, I'm gonna link the Etsy shop because y'all know I struggle so much with building things, putting things together, but this I could do in like five minutes. It was amazing. And I know the windows are behind me and you should film with videos in front of you, but I just, I can't do that in this room. I, I, I'm already in a bad mood. It's my birthday today, by the way. It's July 29th, Monday, and I just have not been feeling it today. I don't know why that is. Um, I know some of the reasons, but I, I'll sound really selfish if I say so. I'm, I've told my friends, but not my family, <laughs> because, yeah, I don't want to put anybody down. But, yeah, so I just... That, I just haven't had a great day mentally, even when I woke up this morning, I just wanted to stay in bed. I was like, I don't wanna go and do things. I just wanna stay here in my bed, be cozy, look at my phone, doing good read stuff, still doing bookish stuff, because you know, I wanna do bookish stuff. That's my, my happy place. If just in my room, this would be the most ideal place to have these bookcases, because this room does not have a lot of wall space. We have two windows, two doors, two closet doors, and then the, um, computer has to be right here because that's where the plug for the internet is because back in the day 20 years ago that's how they built houses uh, probably longer than 20 yeah i turned 25 today by the way but let's this is going to be a kind of wild vlog i am going on vacation for the first time in two years i have not left the carolinas in two years and i haven't stayed on like multi-day trip in a yeah, in two years. It's been over two years. And so I'm going to St. Simon Island, Georgia tomorrow. And then I come home on Thursday. So I'm staying at a resort and all of that, like a resort golf course thing. And it's just like, I get my own hotel room and everything. It's going to be so relaxing and hopefully can get me out of this funk that I'm in. I'm just feeling emo and emotional, wanting to cry. But I, have, I just got caffeine. So that has truly truly helped my mood because I don't want to start this until I had caffeine in me but um so I will be going to Georgia but this is a reset vlog as well so we need to work on my bullet journal I say I only say bullet journal I used to have a bullet journal it's just a reading journal now so we need to do my August spread which we can get started on that after I film this clip um so we're we're going to get all that done because y'all know we need to get our life together. <laughs> but let's go into my weekly TBR. The first thing is my poetry collection. I'm reading Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Pepperell. This is all about love and heartbreak and everything that comes with love, just the raw emotions of it. And it's fine. Uh, this kind of poetry I'm learning isn't really for me, but that's why we only are here to try new things. Then my TBR pick, we are reading like a Gemini this week. This is my rising sign. I don't remember what rising means, but that this is a book geared for Geminis. This is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I am doing this as an audiobook. And this book, literally, I had never heard of it before, but the guy working at Barnes & Noble recommended it to me because of another romance book that I was getting. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll try it. And that, that's how I got this book. <laughs> so this is about Florence Day is the ghostwriter for one of the most prolific romance authors in the industry. So think like Honora Roberts and Penny just opened my door. She has a problem. After a terrible breakup, she no longer believes in love. It's as good as dead. When her new editor, a too handsome mountain of a man, won't give her an extension on her book deadline, Florence prepares to kiss her career goodbye. But then she gets a phone call she never wanted to receive. And she must return home for the first time in a decade to help her family bury her beloved father. For 10 years, she runs from the town that never understood her. And even though she misses the sounds of a warm southern night and her eccentric loving family and their funeral parlor, she can't bring herself to stay. Her father is gone, yet everything else feels the same. And she hates it. Until she finds a ghost standing at the funeral parlor's front door, just as broad and infuriatingly, <laughs> so not right, handsome as ever. And he's just confused, and he's just as confused about why he's there as she is. Romance is certainly dead, but so is her new editor, 
and his unfinished business will have her second guessing everything she's ever known about love stories. So I started that. I am 44 pages into that one. I do have a mood read that I'm also doing the audiobook for, and that is The Forest of Vanishing Stars by Christian Harmel, my first book by her. We have our main character, Yona, who was taken basically by a woods witch in um, Berlin. She was taken from her family who her father is, I don't know what the right term would be, but he's buddy buddy with Hitler. So he's a Nazi, but I don't know what ranking in the government or anything like that. And so she gets kidnapped, yeah, kidnapped, when she's about two years old and goes to live in the woods with this woman, um, Yerusha, I think was her name, and I love, I love her character. And they are living in the woods, and that was back in the 1920s, and now, flash forward, we're in 1942, so World War II is breaking out, and a lot of Jewish people from, like, Poland and Belarus, they fleed the ghettos to live in the woods, and this is about surviving in the woods and um, our main character Yona is helping them survive because she knows all about the woods but these people like city folk they don't really know about it so that's that one and that's based on a true story I was amazed I had never heard anything about Jewish people running and living in the woods to avoid uh, the concentration camps being shot dead like I did not know any of that happened and then I have my ebook, which is An Echo in the Bone by Dana Gabaldon. This is about a family at the start of the American Revolution with some time travel elements involved. So let's go work on this. We're just going to be doing the part with the... Okay, I'll show you July's for an example. We're just going to be doing that part. And I might need to be downloading um, audiobooks and ebooks and all of that. So we are going to go put together my August reading spread. corner my reading corner you know so I just I went to Target because my dad needed to get a suitcase and I did get a book 
while I was there because you know when you're feeling sad like a character in this book she bought like six books because she was feeling sad <laughs> and I had to underline that part because honestly relatable but yes yeah, so I'm gonna have my own hotel room which is super exciting because it's so rare that that happens I don't know if I already talked about that on the vlog but I am so excited because that means my reading's not gonna get interrupted or any of that so like I could read all day but yes I do have plans to go to some like historical sites indigenous and European and then um yeah I've never been to Native American mounds I've never seen that in person there's some near me I don't know like why I haven't gone to see that but I am going to find one <laughs> instead of park I'm not going to find one but I'm going to see one for the first time so I'm super excited about that because the Mississippian mountain culture really fascinates me I, i'm not sure if these are mississippi because i feel like this is pretty far east for that it's actually the westernmost point on the east coast interesting right um so and then the other thing was a fort for when florida was still spanish and the english were you know how to protect their colonies so we're going to that and then there's a old um historical black schoolhouse and there's a little library at that so I'm gonna check that out so we're doing some history things we are gonna go book shopping we're gonna go little libraries and it's just going to be a good time for my birthday because I want I I've never been to a resort <laughs> so I'm gonna feel really bougie and I get to read and just relax because when I went to Miami I don't know if that was really a resort it was a hotel on the beach and I don't think I was reading at the time no I definitely was just starting on like my Game of Thrones journey at that time I but I don't think I was reading while I was there I did have a YouTube channel there's vlogs but I was just chilling by a pool and that is what I intend to do here is just chill by the pool go to the beach read and this is what I'll be reading I just finished reading in the dead romantics for the day I got to over a quarter of the way in and I'm not feeling a whole lot towards this book like it's a fine time I'm not loving it I'm not hating it but we will go through my tabs and everything so call pal system I don't feel anything towards these characters no emotional connection and this is very much playing into tropes where she's the very quirky girl and the guy is the big tall ginormous dude they yeah, of course, Ali Hazelwood would leave the blurb because isn't she like the queen of having like the big guys and the small girls like size kink? I don't know. It's not what that is. <laughs> but there's that. They're very much, you know, those tropes put into a book. And that made me wonder why are quirky girls so popular in the romance genre? Because honestly, they just annoy me because I'm like, nobody really says these kind of things. Nobody really acts like that. At least I haven't seen people act like that or say stuff like that. It's just kind of strange. Atmosphere, it's not strong, but I think it could grow because we've now gone to her small, um, she's going back to her hometown in South Carolina. It's very small between Greenville and Asheville, which is like the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's very much leaning into that small town like the book wasn't really descriptive in new york but when we get to south carolina we have tons of descriptions very detailed very much wanting to set wanting you to visualize this funeral parlor and i'm like i think most funeral parlors look pretty much the same i've only been to very few but still <laughs> and seen on tv and they all pretty much look the same uh so it's very much leaning into that writing there have been a few good paragraphs but the writing is just fine like i have it's fine it reads pretty quickly and i have really nothing to say for it and then plot again we're leaning into tropes a lot but this has been very predictable i even wrote before i'd read the back when i read the back to y'all that was my first time reading the back of this book in like a year and I wrote down what I think is going to happen. I wrote all this about where I think this plot will go and pretty much check, check, check. So let's go through um, my system or my tab, my tabs here. So the first one, okay, what is with quirky girls and romance? Like, why is that a thing? So we already kind of talked about that. And then here's one that I laughed out loud. Love was putting up with someone for 50 years. You'd have to 
so you'd have someone to bury you when you died. I would know. My family was in the business of death. I saw that. It's kind of funny. And then enormous. I had to underline that. I was like, okay, we have our quirky girl and our big guy. So we're leaning into that trope. Orange, this is just a general. She's like, I hate I hated this man. And I'm like, he's just doing his job. Why are you hating him for doing what he's supposed to do? And this is what I related to today. Buying books always made me feel better, even if I never read them. I have not read any of these. None of them. I haven't read any of them. Okay, let's go to, yeah, this is when I was like predicting the plot. So this is before I had read the back of the book, 36 pages in. Florence goes back to her hometown when something happens to her dad. A ghost gives her guidance in, on her relationship with Benji and happily ever after. And I said there would be conflict with Benji before her dad. I didn't know if he would get sick. I thought he would just get sick, but he straight up died. So if we go to this, that's pretty much exactly like I was exactly right for what this plot was going to be. And then there was, I was like, how many love interests are there going to be? And who will be the one? Because I was like, because I was like, there's going to be a ghost in the hometown. Then we have Benji. But then I found out on the back of the book that um, she finds a ghost stand at the front door. Yeah, so it's romance is most certainly dead, but so is her new editor. So I was like, I thought it would be a different person different ghost and then we had this and then I was like wait this is a flashback to her how she met her ex and what all happened with her ex and why she thinks romance is dead so I was like oh my gosh we're gonna have like three love interests but no it's it's not like that and with this being a ghost I have no idea how this romance is gonna play out and then she doesn't tell anybody like she didn't tell her ex that she is a ghostwriter when she met went to meet with the editor she just pretended to be the author's assistant and not a ghostwriter her brother knows she's a ghostwriter but she won't say for who and i'm like why is it such a big secret why can't you just be honest with everybody about your job like if you are really enjoying writing these books and all okay i had signed ndas to I bought on myself on cautionary tape. I mean, she could have told him she's a ghostwriter, but not for who. Because she, she could just be like, hey, I'm a ghostwriter, but I signed an NDA, so I can't tell you who it's for. And I'm sure he works in the publishing industry. He would completely understand. Why can she not tell? Like, I don't, I don't get why do you have to lie? And that's what a lot of the conflict in this book is about. And then this one... Um... Yeah, of what I would predict happen, would happen with her ex, of why they broke up. I wrote my prediction on page 50, and on page 53 it was revealed, and I was right. Won't say, because I don't know if that's really spoilery. Oh, and she, yeah, so I was like, okay, so this is happening on page 57, that she's like having a meltdown in the bar, and I'm like... Okay, she's going outside to go catch her breath and all. I'm like, she's going to run into Benji. Next page, she ran into Benji. Literally happened. And we had two riding ones. So he, this is her dad. He hugged me tied to your, your grandma. My mother told me once that the wind is just a breath of everyone who came before us. All the people who've passed on. All the ones who have taken a breath. And he took a breath himself. Loud and dramatic and exhaled. They're still in the wind. And they'll always be in the wind. Singing until the wind is gone. Do you hear them? And I just thought that was nice. I never thought of it like that. And then we have... Oh, actually, two more writing tabs. And this one is just describing... Um, her town. So somehow I had managed to snag an Uber who would drive me from Charlotte to Marmont. When the Prius pulled down Main Street, it looked just like it did in my memory. South Carolina was warmer than New York. The broad repairs that lined the road, the roads already unfurling their green leaves, speckled with white flowers. The sun had set and it still bled reds and oranges into the horizon like a watercolor painting. And I'm like, yeah, that's South Carolina. And then that's when I said South Carolina writing is more detailed. That atmosphere, that small town, we're really building into that. So this book is very much leaning into tropes. And I think this is typical of the romance genre. But this one is doing it like no other I've seen has done, at least in a while. So I'm going to go have a very small dinner because I just, I don't want to cook anything since I'm going out of town tomorrow. Uh, so we're just keeping everything nice, simple, and easy. I got you over the halfway point in the forest adventure star job. Okay. This is a new tripod 
I'm using to vlog when I'm home. But okay, The Forest of Vanishing Stars by Kirsten or Christian Harmel. Uh, as I said, I got to about 54% today. And okay, characters. Our character, Yona, is a bit of a Mary Sue. I do think that she obviously does have flaws as in she's different than everybody else like she only knows of the woods she's like socially awkward because she hasn't been around a lot of people but I think the positives definitely outweigh the flaws of she's a survivalist she learned everything like she learned math she learned science she learned chemistry all because Yarusha was stealing books from the villages and obviously you can just learn from books <laughs> I just think it is a bit, you really have to suspend your disbelief. I don't know if it's suspend your belief or your disbelief. I think it's disbelief. I don't know. I never know um, what is the proper way of saying that. And the romance. The, the romance is in this. Why, why do we need romances in this? It just has useless drama and I don't want to read about that. Atmosphere. This is very much like, you know, the real... And the creepy fairy tales that, like, you know, the Grimm brothers were writing is very reminiscent of that because obviously this is happening in 1942, Poland and Germany. <laughs> Might I say more? That's a terrible time. And, but it's, especially to start when we're getting um, Yona as a child with Yerusha. Yeah, Yerusha was my favorite character. Um, I, just the <sighs> Slavic folklore and Jewish traditions I thought it was super interesting to read about and if you like witchy books I think you would really like Yerushka in the early chapters of this book uh, but all the character relationships in this book I think are written poorly that they're just so one-dimensional and that there could have been so much more building in those uh, back to, as I say, the atmosphere. I really enjoy the atmosphere, though, of these people living in the woods. Not extremely fascinating. And then writing, it w I had to switch to the audiobook because I read a paragraph that I love, but I was like, okay, this is a, it's tr it's saying a lot that I am not absorbing all of it. So it is definitely more dense writing, especially at the start as you're getting that world building. It does get better as it goes on writing wise, but it still is a pretty dense book and maybe a tad overridden. And this kind of goes with writing and plot. A lot of this does get repetitive after a while of, okay, we have to um, fix this bullet wound and oh, did it, is there an exit um, wound or whatever? And just things like that. Um, survival things because obviously this is we're going years of people surviving in the woods but just some of the plot points do get repetitive but um one of the things that i am liking the most are the themes in this book of you don't have to fit into one mold in life you can be a lot of different things because that's one of the things yelna is really struggling with she, the woman who raised her is jewish but that's not her mother is she jewish she doesn't know where she identifies on the religious spectrum because she learned all about um she read the quran she oh, Okay, but got in there. She's read the Bible. She's read the Torah. Is that what it's called? And she's learned about all these different religions, but she doesn't know where she fits in. And I think that it's all right that um, people do go through that struggle before finding the one that is fit for them. If they even find the one, some people don't. And yeah, I can't imagine what that's like not knowing exactly where you fit, but it's so realistic. And I think you can do it with a lot of different things of trying to fit in in life. I We're all trying to do it. I also like the theme of you can learn from everybody in life. We have people who, Yolna is learning from the Jewish people who have fled the ghettos. They've lived a vastly different life than her. And they're also learning from her, a girl who is, she doesn't know what religion she is. She doesn't know where she fits in society, but she grew up in the woods away from everybody. So you can learn from anybody and everybody in life. And I think those are such important themes here. And also this was, this is a true story that I didn't know anything about. And I think there's so much to be learned there. And I am learning so much because I had no idea there were Jewish people who actually ran away and survived. I did not know that happened. So I am learning a lot and that's obviously one of my, only one of my goals from reading. I am bringing all these books on vacation with me. Is that ideal to bring four books with me? Probably not, but yeah, when I used to travel like on vacation, like when, my last one, I just brought like one and then my ebook. 
so that might be the more ideal way to go is just bringing one but i'm gonna bring all four with me i might not bring my i'm not gonna probably bring my physical copy of my ebook i mean y'all see how big this is when i can so when i get home i will just come back and annotate everything that i annotated on my phone so do that and then bring all these three books with me and i mean i should finish i could finish all of these when i'm away i don't know uh, i think i'll finish at least one maybe i i don't know how much time i'm gonna have on my hands i really don't know i know what i'm doing tomorrow i'm just gonna hang out probably go to the pool get dinner at a seafood restaurant um might go watch the sunset at the beach so i that th those are like my plans <laughs> of what and just hang out at the resort those are my plans for tomorrow and i guess i'm bringing all those three books with me but i need to go get a bath i'm kind of late on that and here's the audiobook for that one i'm doing two audio so re realistically i probably don't need to bring any of these books with me because i'm doing them all on my phone but i'm not doing that I, I have to have my books with me so i'm gonna get my bath and i'll see you all later Reflux is killing me. If that happens, I don't drink with a straw. <laughs> it's Pepsi just gets stuck on my teeth. I don't know why. That's so annoying. I look like I'm on the first episode of Glee when they do Don't Stop Believing, but I'm in Midway, Georgia, getting Subway because I need food in my belly. Subway wouldn't have been my first choice, but I don't, I don't choose things around here. I don't like choosing things. I'm indecisive. So I am getting Subway and hopefully that fixes everything because this is what happens if I miss meals at my like my stomach's like no where you're gonna have pain if you miss meals <laughs> which is good because you shouldn't miss meals but since I'm on the road it be like that but I love these why is it doing the focus thing I'm sorry about stuff this why is a man parking next to me when I'm filming I've been sitting here forever but the Spanish moss I love it love it love it okay it's the guy part next to me and I'm like, please no. How do I get this touch screen thing off? Okay. This is awkward. Okay, he's gone now. <laughs> so I am waiting for my food. I'm in Georgia. And that's my update. Hotel room tour. This is all mine. <laughs> okay, so here's the kitchen area. Let me make sure. Shut that. Okay. We have a stove, oven, I won't be using that, but all of this area. Look how deep that sink is, like, oh my gosh. All your plates, um, pots and pans, cups, glasses, water, Keurig. Um, I'm not a visor person or a wine drinker, but oh, look how like soft that is. And then this, that is the island. And they have all your K-cups, sugar, I think there, yeah, that was tea that I just lifted. So toaster, dishwasher, refrigerator, freezer, and then charcuterie board. I don't know if I'm special. I'm gonna just cut this. Uh, some sodas, waters, and is this mine to keep? Cause it's like, oh, it has that, the like plastic around it. So a hat, then is this a shirt? We have Golden Isle Olive Oil Black Eyed Pea Relish. I never use relish, what do you use it for? Then this is peanut butter filled pretzels. That. We have garlic infused olive oil. JLo would love it here. <laughs> then Keith's Honey, so this is a local honey. Little honey bear, honey bears are only so cute. This is some kind of, um, I thought it was a bracelet first. first, and then I saw the clam, oyster, oyster shell attached. So I don't know, is this like, do you eat it? Like, I don't know, I haven't had oysters in forever, and then there is a card that I will open up. But all of that, awesome. 
And then this is like the living room area. Look how like, it's very mid-century, which is my, you know, go-to. TV, this little um, table, like the, think of all the books you could put on there. Then we will go out to the balcony. So this is the first balcony. There are alligators in there. <laughs> I don't see any right now, but I've been told. Oh, I did you guys see that fish jump out? <laughs> so I do have this um, obiguri to like eat out here if I wanted to do that. Yeah, I didn't know if I would have a fridge here or not. So I left my birthday cake at home. Lock that. Um, oh, I think I left fly in. So I left my birthday cake at home. <laughs> here is the bedroom. So my I have some of my stuff in here already, and then we have a dresser that is so, because I have a vintage dresser from like the 70s, so the way that moves so easy, super nice. Desk, and it is, is this a drawer? Yeah, we do have desk drawers. And then, look at this, I thought this was so cool. They have USB and normal outlets. Lamp, that's my blanket, but chair, all of that. And let's go out to the second. Unlock, okay. This is the other balcony. This one is screened in, so like if there were kids, that would be really nice. Um, so they don't like fall out or whatever. <laughs> so this is a screened in. And this goes around to the front. All of that nice breeze, but it is pretty hot here, even though we're on the coast. And this is like shells. Okay, let's shut that back and lock. Again, bed can't wait for that mirror I thought there was a, a stand-up mirror at first but then I saw it when I was walking out and I have no idea if this is in focus I've been having focus issues with my cameras but look at this I thought it was just gonna be a shower but look oh my gosh this is to absolute die for oh I can't wait to use that tomorrow <laughs> and then this is the um bathroom mirror toilet window there and that is my hotel room here at Sea Palms. Ooh, did y'all see that egret fly by? But Sea Palms Resort, is that what it's called? Yeah, Sea Palms St. Simons, Georgia. And it's 88 degrees. So they do have the weather on there, <laughs> nice. But I'm gonna unpack first off and then get into the charcuterie board because uh, I haven't had one of these maybe ever. with me when I went out to the park and I was just now for the sunset but I remember before I left I was like oh I'll bring these glasses because I was going to watch a sunset so I'm walking around I have a flashlight so you see this is my glasses case for my sunglasses like they're not and I am cramping because it is the time of the month that I'm like I'm in pain okay hold on 
left them in the car. I got to over the halfway point in the Dead Romantics, so I listened to some of it by the pool and then on my screen porch, you know, my screen porch. I'm like, I, I listened to it on speaker with it all the way up. So I hope the alligators enjoyed it because I did look up to see if alligators are nocturnal uh, because I was curious. So they do stuff at night and day. So whatever the gator is feeling, it's a nice night. So I hope they enjoyed the audiobook. I hope I wasn't disturbing them. And I just think it's so cute that they were here in a romance book. <laughs> okay, so we will go through my notes because my thoughts are pretty much the same. This is a fine book. Like it's not doing anything for me. It's probably gonna be a high two, low three, somewhere in that ballpark. But I did read 105 pages today. And let's get to, okay, at one point a character called her Flowtown because her name's Florence and like I am from Florence, South Carolina and its nickname is Flowtown and the author is from South Carolina. So I'm like, does she know like what? <laughs> and this one, yeah, I have a lot of orange tabs today which are just my general thoughts, like things I think when I'm reading. It's like, what makes you special? As like, wow, so romantic, like sarcastically. And then why didn't you just tell me you ghost wrote for her? And I'm like, literally, why is it such a big secret? We talked about that last night with the NDA and all that. Like I get there's an NDA, but you know, then let's see what else. Um, he um, I didn't get the chance to ask if he remembered how he died or not. And I'm like, he literally said if he did or didn't earlier. Um, like, did she, did they meet again in Shimadas? And I missed it because I was at the pool. I don't know. Also, there were a lot of kids at the pool. Like, I would love to go to one of those places where it's like, I know they do cruises that are only adults. Did they do resorts like that? And if y'all know any, tell me in the comments. Because <laughs> I was like, do I need to go to the pool at like 8.30 when the kids are, I don't know, sleeping? And then I'm like, the the woman that she goes rights for is from Maine and then Benji, the dead guy, is from Maine. And I'm like, what if he's that lady's son? What if there's some kind of connection there? Because Maine does not have that many people. I know it has thousands of people, but it's not like New York or somewhere that has millions of people. I'm like, what? It, what? why is there this fascination with Maine in this book? Is there going to be a connection? I don't know. So that was just a theory. And then she was like, shit, I whispered. I think that's Officer Saget. And he was like, Bob? <laughs> I thought that was funny. Bob Saget, icon, love him. And this, um, the, how this chapter ended, I think it perfectly sums up the book and it does make me kind of emotional. I was foolish. I was only going to hurt myself because if I knew anything about death, the goodbyes were harder with ghosts than corpse. And that's true because a ghost, they're there um, for a little while when the corpse is still there. But once that ghost leaves, that's forever. They're gone forever. <laughs> and I sound an emotional saying that. I promise I'm not about to cry or anything. Okay, then this one is just, I love the father-daughter relationship in this book, even if the dad has passed, but as her looking back at the relationship with the dad, I do really like that. And so I'll just read this paragraph. But he never knew the full story. I never told him that I was, that I pulled inspiration from his mom's romance. They memorized all the stories they told me of their grandparents, all the love stories they had passed down from generation to generation. I'd been so caught up with being the exception to the rule, the one family member who never would who would never have a glorious love story that I'd forgotten why I wrote about love. Yeah, love that. And again, I love the character relationship. And then it said it's not me stuck being unalive. Unalive is not a real word. By the way, if you type it in, it will have the little squiggly line under it. Um, it's like, that is the impact that TikTok lingo has ha had because you're not allowed to like say dead or killed on TikTok because there's censorship and we're against censorship. Um, so people say unalive, unalived, instead of like murdered and I know I'm saying it all over you. Like you can say it on TikTok, but I think they will kind of shadow ban you and not push your videos to the audience as much. And then this is a writing tab. 
The author must have never visited a small town before in his life, Miss Holly said, when she noticed what had grabbed my attention. She shook her head. One of my booksellers loved it, though. I don't get why. And I was like, I, and they're taking the small town trope to an extreme in this book. Not in a bad, like, it's not poorly written or anything. I'm just saying this book is really emphasizing the small town. And then the next page, um, she's asking about like what book inspired him to get into the book industry. Um, she's like, have I heard of it? And he was, his mouth twisted into a grin. And he's like, if I've learned anything as an editor over the last 10 years, it's usually, it's that you never really hear the good ones. And I'm like, he's definitely talking about the book that she published in her name. And then I wasn't very good at climbing anyway, talking about him being so big and I'm like, cringe. Okay, so I did do the leaning in tropes. I wanted to write it down that it's the quirky girl, the big guy, small town, but there is um, that creative being paranormal element to the book that I do think is really cool and I've never, because I've talked about before, when I was a kid or like in my early teens and my tween years, I was really into paranormal books. Not necessarily, I did read some paranormal romance that was for younger audiences, like Twilight and whatnot, but I did read a lot of like ghost books and just different kind of, you know, paranormal stuff. And this is very unique in that field to me. And then I, how I was saying, I really like the relationship with the dad. I hate the relationship with the sister. The sister's just like so bratty and she's the edgy, like, oh, what is her name? Was it Abby on um, Bones? You know, the, the girl I thought was so cool, who was like the goth girl and all, very reminiscent of her, like just by looks and everything, uh, because like we work with dead bodies and we're goth. <laughs> that, um, that, that's me portraying Alice, the sister. And I, I just hate the relationship with the sister. It's so annoying. I'm like, be adults. And then there is um, on that same page, how he was so big, his hands were big. And then I'm not gonna read the, the spicy part. And I'm like, we get it. He's a big guy. And then the ghost comes into the bathroom. Like, okay, I get you're a ghost, but you should still know like bathrooms are off limits if it's, it's not somebody who you were intimate with or anything, like, no. And so she's fully naked in there in the bath and he walks in and she's like, the perv, he stared. I'm like, good, she gets it. Cause I didn't want them to romanticize that. Cause I'm like, that is gross. Like, why did he think that was okay? I don't know. And then they, this is set, as I told you all, between Greenville and Asheville, which we've been there several times in the last year in that part of the country. We even went a few weeks ago. And she's like, the gravestones, um, the older ones had to ride through hurricanes and tornadoes, half a century of grime and moss. I live like 60 miles from the coast and the hurricanes don't do like anything to the graves. So when they are a good like 200 miles from the coast. I don't know what hurricanes are doing damage to those graves. I really don't know. And I'm like, this author's from South Carolina. And then there's a whole thing about with her ex. He's like, you're my muse. And she's like, um, I don't want to be the muse. I'm the fucking somebody. And Daisy Jones, very much the plot line with her ex is exactly that. It's exactly that. So I got to over 200 pages read. Will I finish this tomorrow? I don't know. I do intend to finish it this week. So hopefully we will begin to that soon. But I'm gonna go brush my teeth and then get into the the World War II. The Wednesday. No target today, guys. <laughs> my top, I've worn this in a video before, but my top is PacSun, Bell Amazon, sho um, not shoes, pants, Lulu's. My shoes are Steve Madden from Urban Outfitters.
Oh, hi. <laughs> I just got back to my place and I'm going to show y'all everything. I went over to Brunswick today and then I'm looking at birds and then I went well first I started my day at the Fort Fort Frederica which was a British fort back in like the 1730s to defend the edge of the empire the British empire from the Spanish who were down in Florida which um, something really interesting about my ancestry is around that same time period is when my Spanish ancestry got intermingled with my English ancestry. I have um, one of my lines I descend from is the Solana family from St. Augustine, which is one of the oldest families in the United European families in the United States. I do have Native American on that side too, but for what we're speaking of, that is Spanish and St. Augustine. And at this time, the girl married a man from Maryland and ended up taking the family to Maryland, which was English. So I would really love to find out more about their story. It's definitely something I am going to look into. I, so I think that's interesting in that since there, there were, you don't know, in the, that time period, there was a lot of feuding between English, the England and Spain, Catholic versus Protestant, you know. So I did get some postcards there. I left those in the car, but I did get this little bird. Y'all know I collect birds. This is something I've been doing in the 2020s. And this one's actually a whistle. Yeah, so it's this little China. And this was, okay, this is a national park and it was free to go to. And all the stuff I got ended up only being like $10. I got two postcards and this bird, which was $8. I'm like, literally that's, so cheap and again as i said it was free to go on the grounds everything i don't know if you had to pay if you take an actual guided tour i can read signs i didn't need a tour but after that i went to brunswick i went to target because um yeah i was the one who needed to go to target i want a tripod for my phone which i do have at home but i did not bring with me on the road so i picked up one at Target, this is a tripod selfie stick. Oh, I didn't know I had the ring light. That is really, that's gonna be very nice. So this is only like um, two feet tall, but it will get the job done. I'm just gonna put it on one of those bar stools over there. So I got that at Target and I did go to Books A Million and Books A Million, I think this might be my last Books A Million trip. It's just so chaotic in there. I really struggle trying to find books there, just the way it's sorted and Barnes & Noble, um, if y'all aren't aware, are taking out a lot of their random stuff they're selling and just focusing on books. When Books A Million seems to be the opposite, there's mugs, there's candles, there's toys and everything. And I'm like, it's too much. It's, I'm like overstimulated. It's too much for me. And right time you walk in, they don't even have a sign saying fiction. So I'm going all the way to the back of the store looking for the general fiction section. 
and like they have big signs for spicy book talk books, fantasy books. So those are their big ones. And then on the other side is like the religious books. And I just really struggle. It's very disorganized. And I've been to Books a Million. So now in Georgia, South Carolina, and Maryland. And it's all the same. And I actually don't know about South Carolina anymore because we I pre purely went to Books a Million just for the nostalgic factor because we used to have one in my town, but Barnes and Noble kind of ran it out. But I did get books there, but they're in the car because they did not get me a bag at Books a Million. Books a Million was definitely the most expensive of the stores. Usually indie bookstores are more expensive, but today that was not the case. So I went to two indie bookstores. This is um, GJ Ford Bookshop, which is the one I just got home from. And we talked about Ken Follett. Y'all know I love Ken Follett. Uh, so y'all know I got Hillbilly Elegy a few weeks ago, not knowing who J.D. Vance was. And so I've been seeing this book all over Reddit, which is Appalachian Reckoning, a region, a region responds to Hillbilly Elegy. So they were selling this one right next to Hillbilly Elegy. This one has sold more copies. And this is edited by Anthony Harkins and Meredith McCarroll. And this is basically a lot of different people from Appalachia telling their own stories. And it's, yeah, again, a response piece to Hillbilly Elegy from people actually from Appalachia. And I, so I want to see both sides. So I will read Hillbilly Elegy, then read the book in response to it. Cause I have heard great things about this one, but I also have heard okay things about Hillbilly Elegy, but I do think it's important to know both sides to every coin or whatever. So. I did see this one and I'm glad that they were selling these two side by side because a lot of stores, um, Barnes and Noble stores, independent bookstores have been selling Hobelay Elegy like crazy. It is the number one book um, in America right now for sales. And I do think it's important people are reading it because you need to educate yourself on what you're voting for, who you're voting for. So I do think it's really important that people check it out to see what kind of person JD Vance is and see if that's somebody they won't in office. But I did get that response piece. I did, I talked about Hillbilly Elegy with a few of y'all on here and other social media. So I did want to show Appalachian Reckoning as well. Now I've been looking for a Georgia book because I'm in Georgia. I like to get books about where I am and I just could not find one that's not like a murder mystery. That's not really my jam. So I found the Peach Seed by Anita Gail Jones. This is a lot with the um, civil rights movement era. And it literally it starts out with, on a trip to the Piggly Wiggly. I love Piggly Wiggly. That's where my birthday cake was from. It's, my birthday cake's from there every year. Uh, I'm gonna read this person's blurb here. The peach seed is propulsive, propulsive yet thoughtful, sweeping but intricate, a tribute to the African-American experience that captures its vastness and depth. Jones is an indispensable addition to the canon of Southern literature and Margaret Wilkerson Sexton said that. And the author here is from Albany, Georgia, which is just west in Southwest Georgia. I'm in Southeast Georgia right now. And I wanted to read a Georgia book. My all time favorite book, The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, which I have not seen by Unearth and Jeffers. I have not seen in any bookstores in Georgia so far. That is my favorite book, and it does take place mostly in Chickasetta, Georgia, which is a fictional town in um, the middle of Georgia, middle Georgia. But that's the Georgia book for me, but I did want to find more Georgia books. So I thought this one sounded good, and StoryGraph compared it to Love Songs and Demon Copperhead. And this one I kept seeing in stores today, and I was just really drawn to this cover. This is The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer. And, oh, it's the author of The Wishing Game. I know a lot of people like The Wishing Game, but this is inspired by C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia. This wild and wondrous novel is a fairy tale for grown-ups who still knock on the back of wardrobes just in case. And it takes place in a West Virginia state forest. So like, these are going to be missing for 411 vibes. And lastly, I know that this is gonna be my next kind of follow read for a fact, but I didn't own a copy yet. And that is A Column of Fire. And this is like the third book in his King's Bridge series. So that's all that I got at GJ Ford. And then I did go to the Ryden books as well. And I first got Westwood Giraffes by Linda Rutledge. 
This one I see on Facebook all the time. People love it. And I want animal books after I read Laika and this is such an emotional, impactful read for me. I want to read more of those. And the lady there said it was a really good book. Next, this one I also saw in the historical fiction Facebook community. This is A Land Remembered by Patrick D. Smith. And the lady also said this is a really good one. And it takes place in Florida. I am about 30 minutes or 30 miles from Florida, very close. This whole place gives me very Florida vibes. And this is basically like the classic Florida book um, following three generations of dirt poor crackers. So in Florida, that mean, that was like farmers in old Florida. And it's an epic, um, to, so they go from dirt poor to wealthy real estate tycoons and an epic portrayal of the American pioneer will to survive against all odds. I did get their last copy of this. And then the last one is one that I've never heard of. And the lady there hasn't read either, but she thought it sounded an interesting too. So this is A Star and the Strange Moon by Constance Sayers. This is a fantasy novel, but um, historical fantasy. We have an actress in 1968 who disappears. And in 2007, actually it said 2015 on Storygraph, but in the physical book it says 2007. It's, um, one of Hollywood's greatest mysteries and it seems like maybe they are going to go yeah they find new impossible footage of the girl who went missing so I thought that sounded really good I've been talking for 10 minutes I'm gonna go get into the dead romantics now have some caffeine here in my nice St. Simon's cup and then I'm going to go out to some free little libraries at 515 it is currently 428 so it's gonna read for a little bit just finished the dead romantics by ashley poston i'm giving this a 2.5 like it was fine it didn't really do anything for me let's talk characters the characters everything about this book falls into tropes the characters we had the quirky girl the big guy and i thought like their relationship i was like good for them i don't really feel anything towards them i don't feel an emotional connection but like good for them that they're falling in love because i mean isn't that one of the best things you can do there if you want a book with no third act breakup come here because I usually y'all know I hate the third act breakup so since our romance didn't have conflict she had conflict with like all her siblings so I didn't really like that I thought it was really immature but I did like the character relationship between our character Florence and her dad Xavier I did like that atmosphere the New York parts were like they didn't really do a lot didn't really play into the atmosphere but once we get to her small town her hometown it really leans big into this being a small town romance so if you're in a small town romance you might like this especially like so small southern mountain town this is for you more like foothills but <laughs> writing I don't really have anything to say for the writing like it was fine this was a medium paced book I did laugh out loud at some parts so I do think this was a bit funny and it's rare for a book to make me laugh out loud multiple times and this one did do that so the writing was funny and there were a few paragraphs where I was like wow that's nice and highlighted or underlined the plot this is a very unique plot i haven't read anything like this before and i do think the plot is probably the strong point in this is because i didn't really know where this was going to go with the love interest being a ghost who knows how that's going to end because he's gonna have to vanish 
how are they going to deal with that? And he's going to have to go to the afterlife and she's left living the rest of her life not knowing when she will see him again. Very unique premise there. I do have some questions about her abilities just because something in literally the last uh, chapter, I'm like, how? so how does that work out? How I think it left a lot of open doors, just this one little exchange. Yeah, so this was a fine book. It didn't do a whole lot for me, but it was good to read something like this while I've been on vacation. And guys, I'm so sad that I'm going home tomorrow. Like, I'm happy because this was the, my first time in two years uh, since I've owned Delilah going a day without seeing Delilah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I didn't see my child. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I miss her. And I've gone days without seeing Bud, but... I don't know Bud just had all that medical stuff so I miss her and Fred he's my man so definitely miss him but it's like I miss them but I don't want to leave vacation I only feel sadly on vacation I, I'm thinking of, I'm seeing the planes um actually I'm I, do people fly into Jacksonville for vacation that's probably really ideal to fly into there rather than Orlando if you're going to Disney or something but the planes going um to Jacksonville I can see and I'm like are they sad on the planes I don't know <laughs> so yes um, I'm going to write my review for this and then get into my historical fiction World War II book if I do go to Barnes & Noble tomorrow I know I bought all these books today and I did go to the little libraries for that will be a separate video all in itself a short and a TikTok so if you're interested in that a little free libraries here in St. Simon Georgia um, they'll be there. I just realized I totally did bring in the books I got at the little free libraries today. I always get Ellen books at them because like her books are only at them. <laughs> Shivers. I am at a beach so it's fitting. This is Barefoot by Ellen Hildebrand and then I haven't read a book by this author but I plan to this year and that is The Covenant of Water but this is Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verghese. Is that how you say his name? Then one of my friends really wants, wanted me <laughs> to read Verity by Colleen Hoover. And I've always wanted to give Colleen Hoover a go since her books are so hyped. I'm not going to pay for one though. So when I saw it for free, I got it. And they did have um, bookmarks at that one. So I picked up a bookmark there. And then this is... A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving, who seems to be well known. The Wrestling Hall of Fame? What? Uh, that's kind of shocking because I, y'all know The Iron Claw is like my favorite movie. <laughs> so seeing somebody in the Wrestling Hall of Fame writing a big book like this. Okay, I don't like when there's like all caps in books, but this is... I had never heard of it before, but in the summer of 1953, so two 11 year old boys, I was like, okay, children, I love books that are for adults that have children as characters, are playing in a little league baseball game in Graves in New Hampshire. One of the boys hits a foul ball that kills the other boy's mother. I was like, that's crazy. Here's a book I have never heard of. It's Mistress of My Fate by Hallie Rubenhold. We have another book by that author that I got out of the library before, but I saw that this takes place in um, 18th century London, and that made me want to pick it up. And lastly, I didn't realize this was a third. I thought this was the second book in the, what is, what is this series called? The Broken Earth Trilogy. Each one of these books in the series won a Hugo Award. That is amazing, and I've like never seen that before. I do have the first book, I want to read it. Um, I know this series is highly regarded. So those are the books I got at the little library. I still have Outlander to read tonight, and then I'll be done reading for July. And again, I'm sad that I am about to go pack a lot of my, I've already packed the majority of my stuff, just some dresses that are on hangers, put them in my suitcase, and it's sad to go back and leave and go home. <laughs> it's sad, but you know, that that is how it is. And I can always come back. I have that option that I can come back here. So hopefully I can do that one.
check for Thursday. Oh my gosh, my battery is dead. Okay, Abercrombie, Abercrombie, Target, and Klein. I don't, I, this was a gift. Yeah, there's the look. I am about to drive home to South Carolina. Noble, which y'all would have seen already. And I do want to show y'all what I got. I did remember my bag this month. Sometimes I forget my bag, but I did use a gift card that one of my friends got me. And I still have like ten nine dollars left on it, which is awesome because I only got three books and they were all paperbacks, so they weren't super expensive. The first book I got was The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher who is from North Carolina. This book takes place in North Carolina. And I know a lot of people, this is their favorite book by her. And she is an author that I am intrigued by and want to read some of her books. So I got my hands on this one. Finally, I could not find it at Barnes & Noble in Spartanburg a few weeks ago. I could not find it at Books A Million in um, Brunswick. So I'm glad that I was finally able to find it at my local store. Next, I got, this one is so little, <laughs> The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. This was a National Book Award finalist. This explores um, the raw and tender places where Black women and girls dare to follow their desires and pursue a moment, momentary reprieve from being good. The nine stories in this collection feature four generations of characters grappling with who they want to be in the world, caught as they are between the church's double standards and their own needs and passions. And I've heard um, really good things about this book. Lastly, I got a classic because I did read um, in high school weird sections of this. And then and I, I had like, I have a picture book kind of version and that obviously was only like 30 pages rather than the whole book and I want to read the whole book and that is The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. So I got this nice penguin classic. I always like these, um, the black and white penguin classics because it's classic. <laughs> so I picked that up and that is what I got at Barnes & Noble on this trip and I will probably be finishing The Forest of Vanishing Stars tonight. So in my next clip, I will probably be giving y'all my review and thoughts on that book. It's correct on how we will be ending the vlog. I finished The Forest of Vanishing Stars by Christian Harma, and I'm going to be giving this a three star. Characters, this main character was definitely a Mary Sue. Everything just goes her way. All the men fall in love with her. All the girls dislike her. And... Sirens. But okay, so you, you know that kind of person. And I think that all the relationships in this book lacked depth to make them be believable. I To make the feelings in those relationships be believable. That can go for relationships between um, mother-daughter, um, father-daughter, romantic relationships, relationships amongst just people, it was not believable. The atmosphere was definitely the best part for me. It felt very fairy tale esque being in the woods. And even though this is based on a true story, it felt like a fairy tale 
of this girl saving all these people and helping them survive in the forest. I love the influence of Slavic folklore and of Jewish um, folklore, I guess, Jewish legend being inter interwoven into the story. The writing was decent, but I did have to switch to the audiobook because I found myself having to read a paragraph over again to understand what it was trying to say. And as for plot, the straight up plot itself was very, I think it was over dramatic and it very much um, points were happening just for convenience and everything seemed to go in the way of like, for the character to do well, I guess. But I do like the themes of identity and you aren't what your parents were or what your family was. You are your own person and you shouldn't fault somebody for the crimes of their elders. And then, as I said, identity, finding yourself where you belong in religion and uh, in society as a whole. I think those themes were done very nicely. And this was very informative because I had no idea that any of this happened and it is a super interesting bit of history that I do want to learn more about. My next mood read will be In the Time of Our History by Suzanne Pari. I am ending the vlog though, so y'all are gonna have to wait till next week to see what I think of that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't a typical reset. I think my bullet journaling was like the only reset part, but it was mainly a travel vlog for my trip to Sea Palms Resort and St. Simons Island, Georgia and to Brunswick, Georgia. I had a great time. I really, really loved it there. My favorite thing was the trees. It was just a great time and I highly recommend going there if you've never been, because that was my first time going and I, so much enjoyed it. Like, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it through this whole video, leave a fruit emoji in the comments below. And as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.